Please welcome uh, dear viewers and listeners. Uh, we thank the Lord that uh, God has given us today, the Sabbath day, and we can continue with the presentations we've been having. We've been going through the testimonials and, uh, and healing uh, series where we give the testimonies of what the Lord has done and uh, the breakthroughs, the experiences that uh, our ministry has been experiencing in the medical missionary line. So I'd like us to, uh, to pray and then we can get into what is uh, there for us today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the time that you've given unto us. We thank you for the Sabbath. And we ask that your double blessing may be upon us this day. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, so in the previous days, we have been uh, uh, we've been tackling some diseases. We began with diabetes. And uh, yesterday we discuss the autoimmune diseases. And uh, we realize that there are a lot or many of autoimmune diseases that are affecting the people today. And uh, most of it is as a result of the, the diet that people eat and also the vaccines and the environment and uh, the farming techniques that have been used today, uh, these days. And uh, we realize that the immune cells turn against themselves so that they attack the good cells or the organs. So we realize that, that confusion can be controlled when we go through the principles of health and uh, do some remedial agencies that help us to repair and make the immune cells to function normally. So today we are going to discuss the, auto, uh, the high blood pressure. And uh, I believe we are going to tackle uh, most, of the, uh, most of the difficulties we find with high blood pressure and how it can be regulated and even eliminated from the body. Yeah, so high blood pressure is known to be a silent killer. When the pressure of within the blood vessels are high, uh, someone may experience a pressure within the vessels that may lead to a coma or death or cardiac arrest. So it is known to be a silent killer because you may not know what is going on in the body. Uh, you may be walking, but it can attack you anytime uh, because um, its effect, not that it can attack you anytime, but its effect can be experienced uh, anytime because it is as a result of the clogged arteries that blocks the flow of blood to uh, some parts of the body. And it's also a very difficult disease to really diagnose a specific place that the blood pressure is building from or what is causing the blood pressure to be high. It can be in the kidney, it can be in the eyes, it can be in the heart, it can be in the liver. So it is always very difficult to really know the the, the, the exact place that has been clogged or blocked. So you need to approach it generally uh, in, a, in a systemic way to make sure that uh, the body is able to uh, the body is able to restore itself. Now over six uh, uh, about six million people, sorry for that. Uh, worldwide experience the problem of uh, heart, heart problems or uh, 
vascular problems or circulatory problems, and three, uh, three million die yearly as a result of the high blood pressure. And uh, every third adult has hypertension. If you are doing a something, for every three people that you have, adults, uh, one of them is likely to experience high blood pressure. And uh, most aggravating factors are uh, as a result of uh, uh, the, the diet. And also there are some uh, races that are affected more, like uh, the Hispanic Americans are always affected than the Africans. And uh, this is a result of the livelihood of uh, the Hispanics. Uh, there are more residentials, uh, residents, uh, and those who are not doing a lot of work as compared to Africans that most of them uh, do a lot of uh, activities. And also if you compare the Black Americans, they experience high blood pressure than the Africans who are, uh, who are in the African continent. So 50% over age 40 experience it, the high blood pressure track, 70% of those who are 65 years and above are most likely to be attacked by the, <clears throat> by the blood pressure. So people with high, with the hypertension, we have the men and women, both men and women are attacked. Uh, and uh, uh, you find that some of them may know, some of them may not know. One eighth under control and the rest uh, are not able to know what is uh, going on. So that's why it's a, it is a silent killer. You may not know until a crisis comes. Is uh, high blood pressure is elevated of much significance at like eight times risk of stroke. <clears throat> if you have high blood pressure, you have eight times risk of getting stroke, three times risk of heart attack, and five times risk of heart failure. So it is a very critical disease. You can die anytime. And another thing is, uh, we can have heart attack as a result of uh, pressure in the optic nerve uh, or in the nef uh, nephrons or in your pancreatic cells. And that is why it is a silent killer. And sometimes people fall suddenly and they need resuscitation, uh, of which some will recover or some will not recover. So, it is a deadly disease. Many people die as a result of high blood pressure today. And people are asking themselves, where, where, how does this problem come? This today I was just talking with a family and um, she was asking how, where do, where, how do people get high blood pressure? What causes it? And what causes cancer? These diseases, people do not know. They think that it's just something that some um, anyhow it. Uh, do you have high blood pressure? What will tell you that you have high blood pressure? So the high, the pressure, blood pressure is the pressure within the arterial walls, like when the blood gets into the heart and leaves the heart. So we have what is known as uh, the systolic pressure. That is when the blood, uh, the cardiac, of the valves relax and allow more blood into the heart. And then we have the diastolic pressure that is the construction of the heart, uh, heart muscles to allow the blood to go to all parts of the body. Now, what is high blood pressure? When it is 140, that is systolic, over 90, or above 140, uh, let's say if it is 130 to 140 and uh, 80 to 90, that is a pre-hypertensive. If it is 
140 to 150, you are actually uh, at the risk of developing high blood pressure. And uh, it is uh, approaching the, uh, the critical levels. When it is 150 and above, 160 and above, you are in a critical hypertensive uh, scale. So the ideal is uh, less than 120 over 160. So it means can be 110 over 70, 110 over 89, uh, 110 over 79, or 110 over 80, 120 over 80. That is on the normal scale. But when it is now below uh, the, uh, the, the systolic is uh, 70 and below, that one is low blood pressure and the person can uh, pass on anytime because of low energy and low pressure. So what causes hypertension? It is the lifestyle habits that people have. Uh, many people feed on flesh diets. In fact, the lifestyle practices that bails the cholesterol levels like high fat diet, uh, uh, animal uh, proteins, the flesh diet, uh, refined products, lack of exercise, smoking, and all those stuff causes hypertension. Now we have obesity. Uh, obesity causes to be uh, to have high risk or to get high chances of getting high blood pressure because of the cholesterol buildup in the system. High salt intake imbalances the sodium and potassium levels. So you find that your cells, inside the cells, you have high, uh, high sodium and outside this, the cell, low potassium or vice versa. Uh, that may make you uh, to have high blood pressure. More so if the sodium levels are very high you can develop high blood pressure. So you need to balance and know the right salt to check. So the foods that we take also causes us to have the high blood pressure, the animal products, the animal protein themselves, the refined products makes us to have high blood pressure. And uh, the, the food smoking is also uh, a risk factor of high blood pressure because for one cigar you take, it is like taking about, um, no, for one packet of the cigar, cigarettes you take, it is as, uh, it is like you have taken about 12 eggs. That it means your cholesterol levels will be past 480 uh, grams per mole. Um, alcohol and caffeine, raises the cholesterol levels and you have you are at a risk of developing high blood pressure plugged arteries because of the high uh, low density lipoproteins makes you to develop high blood pressure physical inactivity if we don't exercise we find we found that in the beginning in genesis chapter 2 verses 15 god created man and put him in the garden of eden to till and end uh, and breast the soul, uh, the, the, the garden. That activity makes your blood to flow freely in the system. And uh, when the blood flows in the system, you are able to, uh, uh, the blood is able to remove a lot of the toxins and a lot of the cholesterols. The heat will help the cholesterol plug to be uh, slowed off so that your system is not impaired. So circulation of blood is very important. Uh, wherever there is circulation of blood, you know that there is health. Perfect health depends on perfect circulation. So we need to exercise, gardening, uh, walking, brisk walking, and uh, uh, activities like uh, um, uh, riding bicycle, Swimming are very important, but the best exercise is brisk walking. Early in the morning, 
is very important, stress. You find that stress has caused a lot of people to have high blood pressure because stress increases the cortisol, uh, cortisol levels. And also it makes your steroids to be increased, the level of, of steroids to be increased in the blood. And then your hormones will be in balance. And then another problem will be the cholesterol levels will be very high and your arterial, arterials will be blocked. Now, what can we do to treat it? High blood pressure. Many people are presented with hypertensives. The, uh, the ACEs, <clears throat> we have the calcium blockers, we have the angiostatins, we have the uh, beta blockers. Those are the kind of drugs of high blood pressure we have. But just to be frank with you, for the people we've been uh, uh, doing the treatment for them, those who've gone through the hypertensives, like the angiostentins, those that expand the blood vessels and uh, uh, the calcium blockers have ever always developed problems with their kidneys, with their liver, and with their heart. So drugs do not cure. We know that um, the best way to, uh, to, to educate people or to make people to live healthily is to educate them on health principles. And they have to be educated that drugs do not cure, they just alter the, uh, the condition of the disease and the disease will come later. Now, drugs do not cure, that one we need to know. They just change the order of the system. They just suppress the symptoms, but do not seal the cause. So all the drugs uh, that we take most of the time will lead us to get greater problems. So we need to learn the best way, the best methods to approach this condition. Are there better alternatives? Yes, there are better alternatives that God has given in nature. And uh, number one, reduce your weight. You need to know how to calculate your BMI, the basal metabolic rate. And you do that by dividing your weight in kilos with your height in meters square. For example, if you are 50 kilos and your height is 1.5, you will divide 50 with 1.5 times 1.5, that is 2.25. Uh, 2 and then the result will be your BMI. If it is above 20, uh, 25, you are at risk of developing uh, um, high, not high blood pressure, but obesity. If it is ranging between 25 to, uh, to 30, you are at risk. Uh, you are having obesity, by the way. If it is 30 to 35, you are uh, having chances of getting chronic obesity. And if it is above 40, then you are in a critical condition. The normal range should be between 19 to 24 your BMI, so you should be able to calculate it. No, the more your weight is, the danger of developing high blood pressure. Now reduce your salt intake, and you need to use the right salt, the Himalayan salt, the Celtic salt, or the sea salt, and you use it moderately because the Himalayan salt, the sea salt, and the Celtic salt have the sodium and potassium balance, but the, uh, the regular salt, the table salt that has sodium and chloride is very dangerous because it will cause high blood pressure within the cells. So we need to discard and have good sources of salt. Um, salt is to be relieved, to be removed. And you get that in most of the foodstuffs we have, that have been processed uh, 
and are stocked in the in the supermarkets, they have 25% of the salt. And most of they have the, um, the glucosamines. Um, how do I explain that? Uh, they have the monosodium glutamate and the MSG that is so dangerous for your tissues, for your cells, and for your organs. So uh, things like the mayonnaise, the cheese, and uh, the tomato sauce have about 75% of the, of the sodium chloride. And so it, many people feed on that and they have a lot of uh, these diseases. So most of the processed products have the danger or forces to the danger of getting the high blood pressure. More so the, um, the beverages like the sodas, they are free sugars that get into the system and the body will store the excess sugar in, a, in the liver. And then when the liver is full, um, mm -hmm. most of the fats, uh, the sugars will be converted to glycerol that will be stored on the soft tissues of the body. And then you will end up developing uh, high blood pressure. Later on, you will develop uh, disease like um, uh, diabetes, and then the kidney problem, and later on, the liver problem. So stop smoking, because smoking boosts the cholesterol levels in the blood. Avoid caffeine and alcohol. That's so dangerous for you. For you. Reduce fat intake, even of the good foods. Uh, even the good oils that we take, we need to take them moderately so that our body is able to, uh, to remove the toxins. Now, eat a lot of vegetables, plant-based diet, a lot of dark green leafy vegetables, a lot of all grains, and uh, we need to avoid wheat so much because wheat boosts a lot of glycerol levels in the body. So you need not to have many more than three servings of wheat, wheat in a week. And uh, if you get the right wheat, it will be very good. Uh, we can substitute the whole grains, uh, the wheat with the millet, with the sorghum, with the quinoa, oats, and um, uh, things like uh, uh, cassava and yams, Irish potatoes, and uh, many other grains that we have also there, brown rice, red rice, black rice, to help us with building or boosting the fiber in the, in the gut system so that a lot of the cholesterol can be removed. The more dense or the more fibrous your food is, the less cholesterol you will have because fiber binds the, uh, the cholesterol. You need to eat a lot of fruits, uh, more so the citrus fruits, the uh, like oranges, lemons, tangerine, grapefruit. Grapefruit is known to be very good in reducing the high blood pressure. So low fat, low, low salt, high fiber. So you need to know the juices for high blood pressure, like celery, garlic, parsley, dandelion, grapefruit, apples, citrus fruits, you can make the vegetable ju juices. More so celery and parsley and garlic and ginger are very good in lowering high blood pressure. You can go on, a, on that juice for about 10 days, exercising, drinking a lot of water, and uh, maybe choose on a, choose on a, on a, on a vegetable, uh, on, on, a, on a raw diet for about three days and then moderately steam them and then uh, go back to, uh, to eating them raw. And maybe you can just add just one piece of, uh, of a carbohydrate, but that kind of, uh, of a regimen will help you to reduce the, uh, the high blood pressure. So we have juices also for the low blood pressure, like beets, grapes, pomegranate. Now there's no difference for me 
with the low and the high blood pressure. The principle is one, to clean the arterioles. Even the low blood pressure is as a result of the arterial walls that are very, uh, that, that are very clogged. And so the heart, more so the heart is clogged so that the blood, the, the heart is pumping at a very slow rate, very slow rate. So you need to know the fruits and the juices to take. Now, uh, pineapple is considered to be good for high blood pressure. You can take a juice of pineapple daily. Uh, if you can take a liter of pineapple juice a day, you will clean your kidney, you will clean your liver, you will clean your heart. It removes a lot of the cholesterol plugs within your arterial wall. The strawberry is recommended for high blood pressure. Vegetables for the high blood pressure are the green bell shaped pepper is very good for high blood pressure. Well, so if you juice the, the green bell pepper with ginger and garlic and take that, if you can manage a liter a day and maybe add some pinch of cayenne, you are able to reduce your blood pressure very fast. Within 10 days, it will be almost, uh, if you had the highest 180 and above, it will be reading below 150. You can try that. The bell pepper, the green bell pepper, and a pinch of cayenne, garlic, and ginger. Very simple. Um, we have also low blood pressure. And the best herbs for the low blood pressure and the best foods are ephedra is great for those suffering from low blood pressure. And peaches are also considered valuable in cases of high blood pressure. Sweet potato uh, used for problems of low blood pressure and poor circulation. If someone is having poor circulation, just take the sweet potatoes and should be organically grown indigenous local uh, sweet potato. Make a juice of it and then add, uh, blend it or juice it with ginger and then add uh, like the one part or one medium size of cucumber and take that juice for someone who is having low blood pressure. Uh, if you are able to take about three glasses of sweet potato in a day, after three days, your blood pressure should be very high. And uh, you must increase physical exercise. Exercise, if you can walk 10 kilometers in a day or five kilometers, at least uh, eight kilometers in a day and drinking a lot of water, you're able to lower your blood pressure, normalize it within three days. If you can walk eight kilometers a day and drink not less than five liters of water and be on vegetarian diet, taking a lot of juices and vegetables, believe me, you within three days, your blood pressure will be really normal. Uh, those are the experiences we've had in the field. Reduce stress, make sure that you sleep at the right time. Do not overwork your, uh, your memory, your mind. Uh, make sure that you have time to sleep and to share with people, visit the people, pray with the people and help where necessary. Stress, if you believe in God, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 26, verses three and four that uh, trust ye in Jehovah, for in Jehovah is the everlasting strength. He will keep in perfect peace those who trust in him. So we need to trust in the Lord the Lord created the day and the night for time, uh, uh, for daytime for day of work and nighttime day of sleep. So most of the people develop high blood pressure because they are stressed so much and they do not even find time to sleep. Um, they don't have more than uh, six hours of sleep. It is good to have seven to nine hours of sleep so that your serotonin and melatonin levels may help to restore and repair the cells. Uh, many people suffer because they do not sleep. Exercise, 
uh, tension, stress, depression needs to be removed. Uh, and you need to be someone who is working and reaching out to others. And uh, depression, anxiety will be solved. Many people are depressed, depressed because they think a lot about themselves and they find themselves in a very dangerous situation. So what they need to do is, um, uh, for those who are joining, we are discussing high blood pressure. Now, what you need to know is that uh, if you think about yourself, you will be stressed more. You need to learn to forgive people. You need to learn to give to the people. Blessed is he that uh, giveth, that the one that receiveth. Ministry to the people, help us uh, uh, turn down our alkalizes, our, our blood. It actually normalizes our hormones. It makes us to be cheerful. A merry heart doeth well like a medicine, but uh, uh, um, a happy heart or a happy spirit dryeth up the bones. Now for high blood pressure, what are some of the remedies we can use? Uh, number one uh, formula is four parts cotton berries, two parts clove powder, two parts cayenne powder, three parts garlic, one part ginger, and one part artemisia. Cotton berries is known to be a heart stimulant. Uh, actually, it makes at a heart tonic, it helps the heart to function well. Now, for those who do not have hawthorn berries, you can use motherwort or lion's ear. I'm going to show us the picture just in a minute. Uh, if you are able to feed or uh, to take the tea made from these hawthorn berries, uh, clove powder, cayenne, garlic, ginger, artemisia, your vessels will be uh, will be will be clean. They will be cleansed, and any um, any cholesterol that is blocked within them will be removed. That is the the the, the, the importance of using uh, these herbs. If someone is in a critical condition, I'll do an extraction of this using DMSO, like four tablespoon othon berries, two tablespoon cloves, two tablespoon cayenne, three tablespoon garlic and one tablespoon ginger, one tablespoon artemisia, and add them into about a, a half a liter of, of DMSO. Let it stay for about uh, one day or three days, as much as you can store it. And then you, this one is going to be very powerful for anyone with a heart problem, be it angina pectoris, be it heart, palp heart palpitations, be it uh, arrhythmias or, uh, or cardiac uh, my, my co-function, uh, the, the problem where the muscles of the heart are very stiff, uh, you use this formula to help you. Uh, sometimes you may not have a lot, but the, 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 you must choose at least three of this, of this heart that you can, found around, you can find around for those who are having the problem. If you have just the teas made for this, you have to take about four cups in a day to help restore the person. For a tincture, you use about three meals twice a day. For an emergency, you use 10 meals under the tongue and the person will be restored if the person is having a cardiac arrest. It is able to uh, restore you immediately. Then number two, we have one cup African eggplant. The African eggplant is a bit bitter and they are yellow in color, some are red in color. Uh, you take a cup. If you don't have that, you may use purple. You chop them into small pieces and then take tamarind, uh, two cups of tamarind water. How do you make tamarind water? Uh, you take about uh, about four pieces of uh, four inch tamarind, because tamarind is in a pod form. And then uh, tamarind has a pod, long pod. So you need to take about three or four inch 
tamarind for uh, fruit that is a ripe well, and then put them in, in um, two cups of water. The water should be a little bit warm and then let it stay there for about one hour. After one hour, sieve it out and then add your one cup African eggplant into it and the two bars of purple garlic that has been crushed and then put it in a glass bottle, in a glass bottle, the one I am having here, or if you don't have that size, choose any, uh, you should, it should be a glass bottle. Allow it to settle overnight and in the morning, you will drink three tablespoons after every two hours from morning to evening. And you will find within 10 days alongside the uh, other principles of health, your blood pressure will be gone. Uh, number three, we have a natural angiotensin. You know that angiotensin are the drugs that are given to widen the, the arterial walls within the heart. So you can make a natural one. And this one I've proven to be working for those who are having very intensive and critical hypertension. Four parts of cut's glow and four parts of fever fill, three parts ginger, three parts garlic, and two parts cayenne pepper. And make sure that uh, if you are using the teas, make sure that you make it strong into, the, you make a seventh power. Uh, making a seventh power is not difficult. If you have the cut's glow, these ones that I've mentioned, uh, number one, the cat's claw and the fever field, you will soak them in water uh, overnight. Let's say we are using one glass of both cat's claw and fever field in four liters of water. Let it soak overnight. And then in the morning, you will boil it for 30 minutes and then sieve. After sieving, add another glass of cat's claw and fever field. Boil it again for 30 minutes, under low heat, sieve it. And then after that, uh, put your ginger, put your garlic, put your cayenne when it is hot, and then let it stay for about an hour. And then take about, uh, about a half quarter glass of that after every four hours, and about three times in a day. There's nothing that lowers the blood pressure like this formula. They have, I have a woman who was having a problem, complication of high blood pressure and diabetes. When she used this within 10 days, she was obese. The, 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 the obesity was gone and the blood pressure was normalizing. Uh, we have number four, that is four parts thylosema phasoglensis three parts clove powder, three parts albizia, three parts cloves powder, uh, sorry, repeated, two parts acacia bark, two parts singing nettle, and two parts comfrey, and make a seventh power decoction, then take half a glass after every three hours. It will be able to normalize your blood pressure within three days alongside other health, uh, other health, uh, a regimen like diet, sunshine, exercise, drinking a lot of water, ministering to people and free of stress, it helps you. Now, another thing you need to do is to do a colon cleanse. In the colon cleanse, you can choose to do a high enema or a no enema cleanse. No enema cleanse is where you just use the powders, mix in water, and then you drink. Use three parts senna, two parts clove powder, two parts ginger, one part psyllium husk, one part bentonite clay, one part activated charcoal. You add this into one cup of warm water, stir and drink immediately. You need to take this three times a day for the first three days and then you relax. Uh, it is going to remove any debris within your colon and once your colon is uh, is is cleansed, you shall have reduced a lot of pressure, a lot of sugar levels, 
and your body will be in the mode of uh, restoring itself. You need also to clean your liver. And I told us how to clean the liver. Uh, make sure that you use lemon juice. Take a glass of lemon juice the first day. In the morning, you warm it a little bit. You warm it a little bit. It should not be boiled. Just warm the lemon juice a little bit. It may be for three minutes. And then follow with two tablespoons of, uh, of olive oil the first thing in the morning, two hours before meal, just once in a day for three days. And then on the third day, do what is known as garlic enema. Take a bulb of garlic and that bulb of garlic, you will blend it in one liter of water, then sieve. The water should be warm. Sieve and fill the enema bag. After filling in the enema bag, you do a high enema, should be one meter up and then the person should be sleeping on a slanting uh, position, a squatting, not a squatting, slanting position. And uh, after doing the enema, give a probiotic. You can, uh, you can give uh, Lepicol or Mega-8 or, or Acidophilus Lactobacillus, or give a juice made of uh, made of cabbage and garlic and flaxseed to rebuild the, the probiotics. Now, if you do that, your liver will be cleansed. If anyone is having a liver problem or hepatitis or any other, it will, uh, it will really go away. It will go away, that one is for sure. And uh, when your liver is cleansed, it means the fats have been removed and when, when the fats have been removed, your blood pressure will be reduced or lower or even normalized. Now, another thing you need to do is know the single heart that you can use for high blood pressure. Now, before I go to that, I want to tell us some of the minerals, some of the minerals that we need for high blood pressure. Um, we have zinc. Zinc is very important for high blood pressure. Say, take 60 milligrams of zinc. Take twice a day. And then you need to take about 300 milligrams of, of magnesium and calcium every day, twice a day. And you need also to take vitamin C about 1,000 units or 1,000 milligrams uh, three times in a day. And then you need to take uh, vitamin K. Vitamin K is very important for uh, removing the, uh, the, 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 the plaques or the cholesterol buildup within the, the arterial walls. Uh, you will take vitamin K about 30 milligrams once a day and you need to take kelp take about 800 milligrams of kelp twice a day and uh, you take uh, mm, uh, we call it um, beta carotene or vitamin b complex where we have vitamin a up to vitamin uh, uh, vitamin 17 uh, but you need to take a lot of vitamin B12. If you know the foods that you can get those minerals, it, is be, it will be very important to make you heal very fast. Another thing is now identifying the single herbs that you can use for high blood pressure. You just boil them singly and take as much as you can, about a liter in a day, and exercising, drinking a lot of water, eating vegetables and fruits, and um, lowering your carbohydrate intake, and uh, also trusting in the divine power, being in the sun will be able to help you. Uh, periwinkle is known to help with the high blood pressure. Take the leaves, a handful of the leaf, crush it, put it in, warm, in, in water, cold water, 
and allow it to settle overnight in the morning, drink that. Take about four cups of this in a day. So you will make about four cups, take about four handful, crush, put in the water, let it settle overnight and in the morning you will use. It is good for diabetes. This is good for hot skin disease, good for lymphoma, good for leukemia. It goes for hypertension. And another one is couch grass. Take couch grass uh, leaves and roots tea, four cups a day. It will lead to diuresis process. You will urinate a lot. And in the process, it makes you remove a lot of the cholesterol. Popo leaves, juice the popo leaves, take about four large pieces, make a juice out of that and uh, take a, a Take a, a half part of that juice, fill it with water, and then drink that two cups in a day. Popo leaves is very good for controlling high blood pressure. If someone is in a crisis <clears throat> and you take that four, four leaves, fresh leaves, juice them well and drink, it will be able to normalize the blood pressure at a span of about 10 minutes. If the person is experiencing going on a crisis, you can do the popo leaf and the garlic. You mix them together and they do an enema. It will be able to reduce the blood pressure very, very fast. Within one hour, the blood pressure, if it was 180, it will be back to 150 or 160. Um, we have the mimosa or the touch me not plant. You take the leaves, the roots and boil it, take it it will be able to relieve you of the high blood pressure. Singly, alongside the other uh, lifestyle practices. We have the lion's ear or motherwort. This one is known to help with, uh, with the heart problems and even menstrual problems and women, general women problem. Motherwort or lion's ear is very important. It's good for malaria, and also for fever, for diarrhea, for amoeba. What you do, you take the leaves, make a very strong concentrated juice, and then add about uh, three cloves of garlic into that. Then take it within three days. If you follow the protocol well, do a colon cleanse and take the vegetables, salads, and fruit juices, being in the sun, do hot foot bath and hot and cold fermentation within the uh, within your uh, within the heart and the kidney and the liver. You will be able to get results very fast with this one alone. And uh, we need to know that the above all things we need to trust in God. We need to trust in God. We need to put our mind in God. What God has, you need to thank the Lord for giving you life and then have faith in all the remedial agencies that he's given. This will help you to cure high blood pressure. High blood pressure should not take a long time to be treated. The regimen should take uh, at most two months if the person is given for the pro uh, for the program peace i live with you that is what god is telling us my peace i give you not as the world gives do i give to you do not let your heart be troubled nor let it be fearful so we have hope in the lord um I have many people that we have helped who are having high blood pressure and some I've really, like there's a time that there was a woman who was having very high blood pressure. And so what we had to do for her is to give her cayenne and garlic. Just cayenne and garlic when, he was, when she was on a high, uh, was the, well, when she was at the verge of going to a coma, just cayenne and garlic. And at a span of one minute, three minutes, the person was, it regained the consciousness and she was in a stable condition. Now we have to do other treatments like the hot foot bath 
uh, the colon cleanse and good food, the juices, and the person was able to be, uh, the body to be, to, to, to run normally. So it is something that is not difficult to treat. When we trust in divine power, we are able to cure all diseases by the grace of God, as we are just medium that God uses to cure the diseases. We do not cure. It is only God that cure through the simple agencies of nature that he has chosen. So may God bless us. And uh, I believe that we have learned something. I would love to pray before I give us time to ask questions. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time. May this knowledge help people who are suffering outside there. And let your blessings always be upon those who seek thee for help. Thank you this night. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.